Hello, Dave Brennan with Case IH. I want to spend just a minute today walking through a uh, work condition setup on an ISOBUS planner uh, on a Pro 1200 display. Let's roll through first the work condition that's going to be set up on the planner universal terminal side of it. That's going to be underneath that caliper icon. We're going to go ahead and hit that work condition. That work condition is going to need to be first identified uh, by a name. So we're going to go ahead and, and see that that one has been selected. And we can open that up and now name that work condition. Typically, a grower would name that work condition for the product being applied or planted. Corn, soybeans, uh, milo, cotton, whatever it may be. Uh, we would define that work condition. So to name that, we will select uh, that box. And we'll go ahead and hit that internal, uh, uh, run that blue area as well. And we'll go ahead and wipe out that work condition name that's in there. Uh, we'll just go ahead and simply call this work condition corn. And hit OK on that. That's going to go ahead and name that work condition corn for us. Now we need to make a couple of other selections on this screen. Those are going to be whether I control that across the entire width of that planner, all 16, 24, whatever configuration planner that is, whether it's going to be per side. Maybe I want to do uh, two different varieties at different rates, and I could do that on a bulk fill setup planner of eight rows on the left side, eight rows on the right side. So I could do that rate per side, or I could do it rate per drive. And that's going to look at it uh, at, at a little bit more of a granular level where we break that down into uh, four different groups of rows on that planner, depending upon how large or how many rows that planner is. I want to go ahead and control this one per side because I do plan to do some, some split planter uh, work this spring. So I'll go ahead and hit next. Now that's going to group that, as you see, the blue box around uh, the left-hand side of the planner, the box around the right-hand side of the planner. I need to go, to def go ahead and define those two different rates. So that work condition seed control, and I'll go ahead and select that window. Uh, and I'll go ahead and set in a rate, uh, for example, of 30,000. And I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. And you'll notice that populates drives one and two, left-hand side of the planner. I want to go ahead and change this rate on the right-hand side of the planner. And maybe we're going to just a little bit higher rate on that guy. So we're going to change him to 34,000. We'll hit OK there. And now I've grouped those uh, two drives on the right-hand side of the planner together as well, and I'll be controlling those right and left-hand side. That's going to be default rate number one. I need to do the same for a default rate number two, and I'll be able to toggle back and forth between those two rates. I also need to confirm there at the bottom uh, the number of holes in my seed disk, important for rate control. Typically a corn disc, uh, regular field corn is going to be a 27 hole disc. I'll confirm that that number of holes is correct and I'll go ahead and hit next. That's going to take me over to some other default values uh, based off my operator's manual. I know that my vacuum level on corn is typically going to be around that 20 inches of water column. So I'll have that. My bulk fill control based on the configuration of the planter. Uh, my fan speed, my default fan speed, I've got that in this particular case set at 3,000. There are also some product delay windows across the bottom as well um, that will be defaulted to, to a certain level. We can increase those or decrease those. That will be a, the subject of a future video as we talk about section control. Go on to the next screen. Now I've got liquid set up on this particular planter. I will need to set some default rates in, in as well. Um, for, for my liquid control. Uh, I will go ahead and pass through that for now and, and then move into confirming that that uh, seed alarm is turned on for each individual row. If I'm doing some type of custom planning, I can turn those off. And then the same for load cells if I happen to have a, a reason to do that as well. So now I've got that work condition set up. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. I'll hit OK as well here. Uh, confirming that and it's going to go ahead and power down that display or power down that ECU on the planner and then bring it right back up. So it will take just a little bit of time to do that when I create those work conditions on the planner side of it as it reloads that. So now that we've set up our work condition on the planner side, we want to go in and create work conditions 
four other crop types. It's important that we set those up for those other crop types because it does tie back rate control using the number of uh, holes in that seed disc. So it is critical that we get those set up for the different types of crops and different seed discs that we're using throughout uh, the season. This can be done ahead of time with all of those different default values populated through um, and we can name each one of those and select them when we get to that crop type. So that was work condition setup on a 2000 series planner running the ISOBUS solution. For further information on work condition setup, refer to your operator's manual or visit your local Case IH dealer.